Hi everyone, um, and today we're posting something really special on YouTube for the first time, and uh, our wonderful guest is uh, Marina, who um, is uh, living in Switzerland, right Marina? And um, yes. she had uh, her dancing story, which I think is uh, really important to talk about, and to talk about her experiences, which resonate with uh, my experiences and with experiences of so many girls around the world, I guess. So um, Marina, please um, go ahead and can you tell us your dancing story from when you were a child? Yes, so hi everyone at first. And yes, I also think it's a very important topic to talk about because I think it's just a very big issue in the ballet community as a whole. So um, my dancing history is quite different from the one of like Mary. Um, I was always, I always just danced for fun. You know, I was never like a professional. I was never training as professional. Um, I started dancing when I was quite young. I was about like four years old and I just like took weekly classes just for fun. I really enjoyed them. And then when I got a bit older, like around 11, and there was like, I was thinking about maybe joining like a professional academy or not. Um, because when I was young, I was actually quite doing quite well. Um, dancing wise and it was certainly like something that I was thinking about um, but then I really wasn't sure about it because of I think the whole like setting um, I was sort of afraid of the pressure I think and I also was thinking like yeah maybe I should do focus more on school and stuff like that and I think also a big part was also like my changing feelings towards my body because when I was younger when I was yeah like around 11 or younger as well I had always, I never like had thoughts about my body, like as probably most of us never had. Um, yeah, and it's also like fitted kind of the ballet standard at that time, but then like, puberty hits and I was developing from like a child's body into a woman's body. And um, I just grew like curvier and it made me feel quite uncomfortable dancing actually as well. Um, okay. Yeah, I have to say I had, my teacher, she was a lovely and I really liked her and she like taught me so many great things. But one of the things that like really bothered me was this kind of attitude towards like bodies that are more womanly, that aren't like these perfect like long lines um, as everybody's talking about in the ballet world um, which are sort of the ideal. And my body certainly didn't fit that. Um, and I was starting to feeling this way, like that she like was thinking that I maybe let myself go. I mean, it wasn't like in my case, it really wasn't that harsh as in your case, um, Mary. Um, it was way more subtle. It was like the looks maybe that she gave me. And there were some instances where like, I really like felt that she wasn't happy with my body. Um, yes, for example, um, one thing that I remember was when I, just like return to dance after having been sick for like two or three weeks or something. I've been very sick and I couldn't eat and stuff and just really lost so much muscle, lost, yeah, lost weight, of course, because I didn't eat <laughs> um, because I was sick. And then I returned to class. And the first thing, thing that she said to me wasn't like, oh yeah, great that you're back. No, it was, oh, you've become so beautifully thin. And I was like, wow, I was, it like hit me <laughs> like crazy because. Um, well, how, how old were you at, in this moment? Um, I am not sure. I, it was in my teens, I think. Maybe I was like 16, 17. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it like shocked me because I've never been confronted this openly about it. Like I always knew that you kind of thought, yeah, my body doesn't look like it used to look and stuff like that. And yeah but yeah that was crazy i i find it crazy because i heard so many i i believe that it was something like that after i was sick for a while as well but mm -hmm. i've seen it uh back and forth in vegano when people especially yes. girls, of course, uh, specifically were sick and were like yes. out for a week and were not able to eat or maybe just were you know lying and losing the muscle uh weight exactly, exactly. Are heavy and they have some mm -hmm. kind of volume in our body yes uh, yes 
teachers were like, wow, you lost weight. You need to keep it like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, girls are losing weight when they're sick, not because it's a healthy thing to do. No, not at all. Not how, how healthy body should look like. Uh, so yeah, it also, even we were teenagers when we've seen yes. something like that, but it, it, it clicked in the head that it's not the right thing yes. to tell people, especially like girls, because usually boys are, some boys definitely struggle with the uh, things in Bali as well yes. but I think girls issues in Bali are non-comparable way, huge yeah, yeah. Um, way more severe I would say yes and I think what was also crazy was like how my joy in dancing like really got lost because all of this um because I was so ashamed of my body you know I like I didn't I couldn't focus on like dancing anymore or like enjoying dancing I was just always embarrassed because I was also, I think I was like the caviest girl in class as well. And I had some, I mean, all my classmates they were always so lovely and so sweet. I'm very happy about this. So it never came pressure like from their side or anything we're teasing, but I always compared myself to them. And I was always like, oh no, I'm so much more like fat or so much more like curvy. I have way more like a larger bust and um, stuff like that. So yeah and I really started like to disconnect from my body like this kind of dissociation and I really like stopped feeling like my muscles stopped feeling my body's movements and then it's like impossible to dance because like there's just this disconnect and you just can't feel your body anymore and it's yeah such a huge topic as well the disconnection from your body which comes from the judgment which you get from yes. uh, teachers directors etc yes. and yes. as a young child you can't because I dealt with this as well and I think so many mm -hmm. girls and dancers are dealing with this on a daily basis and this is scary because I think it yes. can be for much more serious mental problems mm -hmm. but I, I remember this clearly when you are uh, standing like in the studio um, in front of the mirror and I literally was able to cry just because I looked in the mirror and you know it was a torture to look to yourself yes. uh, for like one and a half hour of class and mm -hmm. just as you said you stop enjoying this process you stop mm -hmm. enjoying dancing and uh, yeah. that's why you are coming into ballet or into a dance exactly. world because exactly. you as a child really love to dance and then it all comes around the body things and how you look how you're supposed to look and you're trying to I, I, I'm so I'm so like surprised when people are saying oh you needed to quit then like if you didn't fit but you're trying hard say, you know yeah you know, as a teenager and and then yeah I remember mm -hmm. that you're staying and you are not yes. able to concentrate of what you move because you think you don't deserve to move you don't deserve yes. to be in the studio yes. around a thing you're like classmates girls and especially when a teacher as well is trying to like kind of I don't know um pick on you and uh, yeah. tell you really hard things to listen uh you definitely decide to like disconnect from from your body because it's I think it's the way of um, a shield to put in a shield yes, you, totally. to not um like let people come even closer to you because you're already like damaged inside yeah. that's yes, crazy. yeah super crazy like another incident that happened to me I think I was a bit older back yeah back then but um I remember we were like um we had to like order costumes for a performance that we had and you know, I always knew like with ballet clothes, it's super difficult because especially if you have a larger chest, like stuff just doesn't fit you, you know. And um, I really like measured everything, you know, just to be sure to like tell my teacher the right size because I knew it was, I had a difficult body for ballet. And um, yes, then I measured everything. And according to like my measurements, I had like a size S, like a size small. And it was the same size as all like my other classmates had. And then I was like telling my teacher, oh yeah, yes, I have, I'm also an S like the others. And she just looked at me like, um, I'm not sure Marina, I think you need a larger size. And I was just like, what, what is happening? I told her like, I, I mean, I was a bit older and I like, I could like speak up against her at that mm -hmm. point. And that was really good. And I told her, look, 
I measured myself. Um, according to my measurements, I'm a size small for this brand. And you can order for me a larger one, but if I have a problem with the size, it's you. It's your fault and it's your problem. And you have to see that I get like a fitting one for the performance. And she was like, yeah, no, I think you still need an M or a larger one or whatever. And then actually one of my friends from the class, she like stepped in and was like, no, she's like, Marina's telling you, like she measured herself, like what's the problem here? And yeah, that actually helped. And she ordered me an S as well. Yes. But it's, it's crazy, you know, because I mean, Those I even have foundations. Yeah. Yeah. And like, also like, you're really exposed, you know, I mean, I'm very happy that I had such a lovely class, you know, that was always supportive, but like, if I didn't have them, I don't know. I mean, if you maybe like, things could yeah. have got worse. Definitely. Yes. Yes. And I think it's, it's an important topic for like young girls to uh, tr try to find yeah, the, the supporting environment. Either it will be yes. a, a family, yes. either it will be a friends, but I know that like kind of, you know, in, in um, I don't like to separate like professional dance school, not professional. These are all dancers. These are all yeah. uh, young kids who want to dance. And just some of mm -hmm. them are like going to professional school. Some of them in some cases and in different ways are going yeah. to non-professional schools. But uh, yeah, try to find the friends uh, who will be supportive or yeah. just like real friends but uh, what I've seen in kind of professional industry um, of course we all had friends too but it kind of all like everyone for himself herself and yeah. uh, it's not especially if uh, the pressure comes from the teacher to like one of the students um, no one really will kind of like defend you or something that's what yeah. I experienced a lot yeah like everything yeah. goes on you but everyone is kind of afraid to if if they will step up uh, maybe they will get some of this pressure on themselves and of course yeah. no, nobody yeah. wants to do that um, yeah, and your story about measurements really uh, related to how you are trying to, you know, scale yourself every day because you're yeah. so afraid to when they are told you that you need to lose weight and you want to see what the numbers are and these numbers like in normal world not a dancing world I also think a lot like how would have been I grow growing up if mm -hmm. I was not in Bali and you know I was happy with my body I was yeah. happy with my curves I was happy with my puberty process um, but there it was too much it was not good it was yeah. really bad you were yeah. like fats and etc and you start to scale yourself and I was ready to how you pre-measured yourself to say that I'm small I remember uh, it was uh, some kind of I don't know show in Marinsky theater and mm -hmm. we as kids were participating in kids mm -hmm. dances parts and I got sick something was like wrong with my stomach and they led me to um kind of a you know uh a doctor punked or doctor plays in this and I needed to tell them my weight for I don't know some kind of scaling and I was ready to uh, say it like first thing out of my mouth because I knew how I weighed and I was like trying to keep that weight but it also was kind of a shield they just asked my weight but I was ready yeah. to fight because I think that yeah. we're asking something like am I fat or yeah. not and I was ready to defend myself and mm -hmm. this is this is yeah it's insane right this is really sad yeah and uh, uh, another thing uh, about graduation dresses uh, the one class it was fifth fifth ninth class uh, this is a like um, classes how, how they measure classes fifth in normal school and ninth in ninth in normal school and fifth like mm -hmm. Vaganova Bali school uh, class um, and we had a graduation there and then there's a next graduation when it comes into second course so it's kind of like a weird weird thing but in fifth class I was that skinny I lost a lot yeah. of weight because and I was super happy even though my health was like kind of going apart on all the pieces and uh, um I was searching for a graduation dress mm -hmm. uh, and I was happy that I lost weight here as well because when you're losing weight, you're losing weight mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, and we were looking for a dress and it was hard to find a dress, a graduation dress without, you know, like place for a, yes. um, 
because it was normal normal uh, man shops which provide uh, graduation dresses for uh, puberty girls teenagers who usually have breasts because it's a normal thing to do and uh, the I remember the woman in the shop she was like kind of like walking around me and looking and she oh it's it's like and she was sad that kind of I don't have breasts yeah and, you know and she thought that I'm sad and she told like oh you can you know you always can put something under the dress and I just yeah watching her and my yeah. mom was standing there and don't yeah. say things like that to her she just like lost it everything and she's happy but mm -hmm. now looking at this uh, scene it's like it's yeah. crazy it's yeah it's, it's insane mm -hmm. it's insane right like the same as when I like talk with friends of mine they're always like jealous like of my larger chest but me is always like I wish they were smaller I wish they were like this prominent you know and it's it's insane because you just have like these crazy standards for ballet and they just they really are ingrained like in your in your brain right because you learn them from like very young yes. and yeah it's so damaging actually and I still like struggle with body image to this day you know yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's crazy and I mean I also did like therapy like because of other things as well but I also talked about um body image with my therapist as well and I think it really really helped but still to this day it's difficult for me I still have those days and I'm, I'm still dancing and I'm finally like finding some joy in ballet again which is really nice um but still I have those days where I just feel like I just look horrible and I really struggle to concentrate on dancing um yeah I mean now I can like take a step back from it and like question like this kind of mindset but it's still it's still so difficult yeah part of that is always like I think standing staying yeah. with you and yeah. that's what it's yeah. happening too as well and Maria I remember you told me uh that uh, now you are learning psychology and you're already got yes. your degree right and yeah almost finishing my master degree that yeah. that's <laughs> insane and it's I think also a great example that you know things could go well for everyone and it always possible to continue a journey in kind of a different or similar mm -hmm. direction and uh, I think part of what happens uh, to you in all these struggles mental struggles it led you to this uh, to choosing this path right yeah probably I guess yeah you just get more aware of like these kind of things and like also how prevalent they are I mean so many people struggle with these things and also especially in the dancing industry it is sort of like an open secret but nobody talks about it and I think it's it's insane like I don't understand it yeah and usually what I see like on social media on YouTube etc of course there are stories of like successful ballerinas successful dancers uh dancers who made it and it's great it's what I was watching a while I was a young dancer yes. it's inspiring but you don't see the other side of that uh the other side of the industry and uh uh, I think girls, and I consider myself right now as girl who kind of didn't make it, um, we are like parted uh, to the mm -hmm. side by a society, by a Bali society that, oh, you didn't make it, like it's your fault, yeah. you were not meant to be in Bali, but it's our stories and we struggled a lot yeah. and we put all ourselves into this journey and we definitely uh, deserve to be hurt and deserve to tell another side of the story. And yeah. I think myself, if I've seen something like that and I heard something like that when I was a child, probably it would help me, probably it's uh, will yes. like set other thoughts in my head as well yes absolutely I was thinking the same like this is also one of the reasons why I really wanted to do this talk with you because I think I wished I wished I would have seen something like this when I was younger and so, heard something like that yes yeah. exactly and that like many people are struggling with this and yes yeah, so it's just like important to like bring awareness to this topic and exactly and what you said about uh, like disconnection from the body and uh, uh i <laughs> this is one of the scariest things uh mm -hmm. because it's really hard to put yourself back into a connection with your body uh mm -hmm. and into acceptance uh because for a long time you are told that your body is wrong and uh, you are like built not in the right way and you see you see other girls bodies uh as an 
example and as a the only one example like how it should be and mm-hmm. you consider yourself as ugly and that's what happens when like my body started to grow up again because uh, then comes like an eating disorders and uh, all the other stuffs and I started to grow and grow and grow on stress and on I would say like binge eating disorder um I started to hate my body and now also when I started to like work with a therapist and work with my head itself um, I realized how how dangerous it is to hate your body and if your body is under your hateful thoughts like 24 hours seven days per week you literally can get some really real uh, like diseases Um, your body will just I don't know, uh, protest these thoughts in your head. And it's really, really bad to, yeah, all the time, you know, um, send all this hate to your kind of like breasts and then everything, fat parts, uh, for God's sake, yeah. etc. And for these days, it's been like already, I think, seven years since I left uh, professional Bali and theater and, and everything. And I still, you know, I'm afraid to wear tops. I'm afraid to wear like slim dresses because I, part of my brain, consider myself that you are not supposed to, you can't, you don't have a right body to it. And uh, this is, yeah, this is really disturbing. Yeah, I can really like, yeah, I really feel the same. I also still have, like, I'm really struggling like to put on a bikini and stuff like that. I just feel like I look so horrible and I just like can't stand it, which is, it is stupid, you know, because we just have bodies like everybody else. Yeah. And it's beautiful and they, they are healthy and they're working and it's so nice. But like these thoughts are just so ingrained like in you when you just like grow up with like these extremely thin ideals and which you can never fit because your body is just not built that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and also what, what also I, I hear a lot from people that oh okay like you were not meant to you were not built so the Bali is for thin girls like only for for specific bodies types yeah. and maybe a lot of people especially like in the Russian ballet industry thinks that way yes. uh, but I think the times will come when more kind of a human normal bodies will be accepted and what I told in one of my videos if that the standards didn't were were not like that even like 20 30 40 50 years ago in some cases and if we will take uh, Marie uh, Maya Plisetska and Galina Ulanova and other kind of uh, dancers, uh, they definitely didn't have the body type uh, of what is the body type of a modern ballerina is right now. And now if they were trying to make careers now, they definitely uh, will be told to like lose weight. They will be probably body shamed from teachers, directors, etc. And they weren't back then. And so why we are always like, why the industry pushing these standards more and more ahead uh, when it becomes more and more dangerous and when so much suffering uh is like under all of this uh in so at so many girls cases so i think definitely uh, the fight worth uh, worth it definitely yes. worth to talk about it at least yeah. yes for sure i think it's so important and i mean these standards they were set by humans and humans can change it you know like definitely this easy you know and yeah Like nobody tells you that a body should look like this. It was said by someone and we can change these standards. And I think it's really important to open up this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, because like health of so many like students and young people like depend on this, you know, Mm -hmm. and yeah. And girls who absolutely, you know, uh, they are some naturally built uh, thin girls and it's absolutely great and everyone is, yes. deserves to be on stage it just yeah my point is not to how some some people say that I body shame a thin girls which I think it's like absolutely ridiculous no it just to put more di- diverse exactly. variety yeah. on stage. yes and that uh, not, uh, you know, a uh, thin girl also deserves to be on stage if she's a great dancer. Uh, it's all about dancing and it's not only about the bodies. And I think American Bali kind of has more diverse type of the bodies, but uh, listening to the stories of Misty Copeland um, and um, uh, Sarah Hay, but Sarah was in, in, uh, in 
what do you call it interest in germany yeah, right? just, yes and, uh, and i've seen her in person one more time it was amazing Why, while i was auditioning mm -hmm. mm -hmm. interest in Bali. um so yeah they also t telling that they were going through so much struggles and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. much these uh difficulties of uh, body image in, in yes. the Bali industry so i think yeah but these are the people who will change something so mm -hmm. i really Absolutely. care yeah absolutely true yeah and i remember marine that you told also about uh, two cases in switzerland schools right uh, in which one of them yes. was closed even can mm -hmm. you talk about that a little bit more yeah like it was actually last year um i think in summer it's the first and like in autumn the second yes like we had two like scandals about ballet schools um i'm always like amazed about like calling it a scandal because I think it's sort of an open secret but um yes one was like about the um Tanz Academy Zürich um which yeah is a like more famous dance school in Zurich and yes like um there was a scandal about like abuse like mental abuse psychological abuse like just all the stuff that you experience basically like body shaming and just like really like destroying like the psyche of like students and there it was it wasn't really like worked through I would say like it came out big in the press and stuff like that but like they didn't really change a lot at this school so um I think it was mainly the director that was a problem and like she's still working there and like I think nothing happened basically so I don't know if they really are changing something and um, the second one was um a ballet school in Basel, also a professional ballet school. And there, yeah, it was like the same again, like psychological abuse, emotional abuse, stuff like that. And yeah, like the students were told so horrible things, like that they look fat, that they look absolutely horrible, that they can't dance and all these kind of things that we all know about, sadly. And there things were actually handled different, in a differently, in a different way. Um, and the school was eventually closed actually in the end because like people said we won't finance this anymore because this is abuse we won't support this and yeah actually I think the students that were like still at the school they actually now have to look for different places to like finish, finish their, their dance yeah. degree somehow yeah mm -hmm. they completely like closed the part that was like for professional like academy yeah it's definitely sad in one way because yeah it puts struggles to find uh, the way and it definitely I think affected the mental state of students as well all, all of this uh, all the situation but uh, uh, on the other hand it's good that things like yeah. that are coming up coming out and uh, the society mm -hmm. sees something mm -hmm. and trying to change something so it's yeah it, it works both ways but definitely it's it's great that things like this are going to like internet and everything yes. because i i uh can't even imagine something like that like will happen in russia yeah. for example of course there are stories and there are students ex-students who are yeah. up, but mostly we are getting like so much hate and after my eating disorders video it's so funny yes. how um i got so many stories from girls all around the world but on the other hand uh crazy and not everyone but some of the russian ballet society they are insanely you know like protective of these methods yeah. and protective of yeah. people in this industry and they uh, sent me like some kind of horrible messages but yeah, uh, I think uh, yeah. speaking up is more important than listening Absolutely. to people who are dragging Absolutely. themselves in this industry still. Yes, because I mean, we have to do something against this normalization of abuse, because yeah. this is what it is. It is completely normalized. And I think it's so amazing that like, I think for the school in Basel, it was actually students who were really actively speaking out. And I think this is so brave and it's so courageous and it's so good. That I wonder like, will yeah. like some of the students uh be able to talk with us too <laughs> I have no idea yeah but yeah. that's cool that girls in Switzerland maybe I hope will see our video and uh, will hear to your story and uh, um just see that they are not alone and maybe it will help someone in a mental way it will be a goal and I think it will be great uh, if it will happen yeah 
I think it's it's so important to, like to have this mental shift like just in general in the ballet community because like these young students now they will be teachers maybe one day or maybe they will even become like a director of a ballet academy who knows or like a director at like a company whatever and I think yeah this is how we change things if you like change like these mental images and change like this normalization of abuse and I think that is the thing why it is so important to talk about this because we are the people who can change it and yeah, yeah. exactly one one a woman was asking me in in the comment section and under one of the videos actually like oh if you were like a director of a dance school mm -hmm. uh, what would you do differently and it's a great question I uh thought of it and maybe different things and maybe I need to like think uh, more about the answer but the first thing that all the dance schools even not professional ones need kind of a psychological help and support for the mm -hmm. students kind of a you know like a little office with a psychologist and uh, definitely um, places who has more uh, students uh, more offices inside because we had one psychologist in Vaganova but it was mm -hmm. it was not serious it was a joke and she was yeah. a, like an ex-ballerina and we were afraid to tell her things because she was all like in a circle of a teachers and uh, she just uh, was able to tell what we are telling to the teachers and it was not safe you know with a psychologist with a therapist you need to feel yourself safe absolutely <laughs> um, yes so yeah I think and I think these things should be really done and uh, so many uh, suffering uh, could uh, go down if if yeah. their proper support would be given to the students yes and I also think like schools should really react if they have like these abusive teachers they should do something about them it shouldn't be okay to just like let them continue to teach this way yeah. and I think this is also really important to, have to just not accept this behavior anymore like yeah. make it unacceptable yes Definitely, it's possible to raise uh, great, uh, I think, ballerinas and athletes without this kind of abuse. Yeah. I think it's just a cliche that is impossible. That's you know, when you're talking about abuse and people, oh, what, what, what did you want? It's like a professional sport. It's professional Bali. Uh, oh, it's insane. It's insane. You know, yes. like that's especially sad. also from like a psychological point of view. Like mm -hmm. this won't, this won't help you perform. It won't help you because yes. fear it just paralyzes you. It won't help exactly, you. exactly. Yes. And it won't help you improve because if you're always super afraid of making a mistake in class and you are in class to learn, um, yeah. So you will I'm, not be able yeah. to train yourself. That's exactly, also exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm 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 able to talk about this. Like I think we have so many other things to discuss, <laughs> yeah. but my Zoom is showing me that the time left is like three oh, minutes. I see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, to end the recording, and I hope that uh, like the record will be saved to the computer. I'm so um, like freaking out a little bit. We are doing this for the first time. Yeah. Today. Uh, but Marina, thank you so much for talking with me on this. I think super important issue, and uh, I definitely wish you to finish your degree with a huge success and be thank able you. to help so many people because I think after mm -hmm. what you experienced and uh, what um, like you were thinking in this industry maybe it's also will be a great uh, help to a dancers who knows uh, yeah maybe yeah, thank, thank, you so much. Much. <laughs> thank you and uh, I hope maybe we will talk soon something something more about um, yes, after, sure. this one yeah, after I will, I will edit and post it on YouTube <laughs> 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 yeah that would be some work to edit it yeah we talk an hour yeah that's insane wow. right that's that's longer than yeah. the last time we were preparing all of that um <laughs> thank you so much again and uh yeah, guys i hope i hope that it will be helpful for some and uh that young girls will maybe watch this and um yeah take notes because uh belly is possible without suffering and dancing is possible without suffering and uh, some uh really abusive environments can cause so much damage uh, for the i would not say the rest of your life but for a long time after yeah but there is always a light in the end of tunnel yeah if you will help yourself yes for sure yeah. thank you marina and uh, talk soon hopefully yes talk soon <laughs>